<clears throat> oh, how can I share live? Okay, so um, dear friends, whoever watching this video or whoever will watch this video, I uh, just want to share a few words about uh, demographical or geographical locations of where Chakmai people live. So, uh, as you see in this description that I mentioned, uh, Chakmai people live uh, in three countries, which are this is India, Bangladesh, and Myanmar. So, uh, let me start from Bangladesh, where Chakma people live. Uh, most of the Chakma people live in this area, in this particular area, uh, which we call uh, Chirago Hill Tracts. Chirago Hill Tracts is a combination of uh, three hill districts, which are uh, Kagachuri, Rangamati, and Bandarban. And Bandarban. So this area is the Bandarban. So these parts, uh, like uh, where most of Buddhist people live in Bangladesh. And before, like, let me just take you back to the uh, historical records. Uh, in 1947, when India, this like uh, undivided India, was being divided into uh, two countries, first of all, this undivided India were divided into two countries based on religions, which uh, Muslims, I mean Islam, and non Muslims. So, British uh, colonists they uh, divided this undivided India as uh, Pakistan and India in 1947 and uh, the main policy was uh, based on religions so Muslim people will go to uh, Pakistan or non-Muslim people will uh, stay or come to India and that was the main uh, policy so based on religion and at the time in 1947, this area uh, was named as East Pakistan because, and this name was West Pakistan. So uh, East Pakistan speaks Urdu, and oh, sorry, West Pakistan speaks Urdu, and um, East Pakistan speaks Bengali. And um, both both of these countries follow uh, Islam. So though, so. Uh, practically like that's how uh, this area also uh, belonged to India at the time when the India was undivided and that's how uh, East Pakistan and West Pakistan were born but however it was uh, not practical to be a uh, single country while the huge India uh, is between uh, these two countries and uh, India, I mean East Pakistan became Bangladesh in 1971 and so that's how Bangladesh was born but before that when the Pakistan was being divided or separated from India uh, this area was uh, like totally non-Muslim territory uh, like 98.9 percentage were non-Muslims but however due to maybe uh, or some uh, you know some uh, like uh, abandon I mean they abandoned this territory they didn't follow the uh, main policy so they gave this part to Pakistan and that's how this area uh, like annexed to Pakistan but however most of these states you can see in Northeast India uh, every state have uh, has their like uh, particular um, culture or tribes so in Mizorams where like most of the like B Mizor tribe is Mijo in Tripura Mizor tribe is Tripuri people in Manipur um, uh, the Mizor tribe is Manipur so that's how all of this uh, states like uh, uh, I mean uh, these states 
come to exist and came to exit and this part was supposed to be another stage just like this but it didn't and and what happens uh, when Bangladesh was a Muslim country when Bangladesh was uh, was uh, like born at the time most of most uh, like the Islamic leaders they considered this place as their own and they declared that all people in Bangladesh living in Bangladesh should be Bengali should be called as Bengal and some local leaders especially Manabendra Narayan Lama who was the prominent leader from this territory like uh, raised a voice against that generalization of being a Bengali and that's how uh, Bangladesh I mean there's some conflict uh, began between Bangladesh government and the local leaders from this place anyway in 1964 even before Bangladesh was born uh, the the American government uh, there is an American company uh, who planned to build uh, a, a, a dam here so uh, this dam was began like 50 1952 and it was completed in 60 early 60 and more than 45,000 people of uh, were displaced and that dam was like uh, began without even taking any consent from the original inhabitants and that's how while those people living in this area which cover 40 persons of cultivatable land uh, people they lost their homes they became like uh, landless and that's how they took refuge in Mizoram and in Tripura in 1964 so most of those families like 90 persons of those people were Chakma people and before even before that of course there were Chakma people living in this area in Mizoram in Tripura and also in Assam uh, so this they become like uh, they took refuge in this area and then at the time Indian government also was aware of the situation in this area so Indian government uh, gave them shelter and in 1964 at the time India has uh, like land conflict or border conflict with China so what India did Indian government did uh, it took all those uh, Chakma refuses uh, to uh, they shifted them to Arunachal Pradesh in 1964 so in 1964 there is a wave of Chakma people from this area to that this area or this area and from this both area they shipped they were shipped to our natural produce and that's how Chakma people like ended up being in our natural produce after 1964 and anyway so that was the simple background uh, history when we go back uh, like 50 or 60 or 70 years so Chakma people live in this area presently at, at, at present moment so this is called like a uh, corner fully sometime even this is uh, this lake uh, was known as the tears teardrops of uh, teardrops mm, teardrops of Chakma people because uh, because of this lake Chakma people lost their lands lost their homes become homeless so now Chuck people live in this area in this this in this area this is very hilly area and that is why this uh, in the time of British colonization this area was known as um, Chittagong Hill Tracts because this is very hilly area so most of Chuck people live here in this Rangamati Hill District and in Rangamati Hill District there are uh, this is the lake you can see this is the cup Kanofuli river and this is the lake so here Chakma people live in Bangladesh and also here in uh, in Tanchi in Roma and also in Rangamati in Kagachur and you can see this is the border international border between India and Bangladesh so 
so before uh, like all these countries were uh, come to exist these were the places actually t most of the tribal people used to live not only the Chakma people but there were many other tribes they live here so this area is very much different than the main part of Bangladesh but let me tell you before uh, like there are uh, even this area actually this area when Bangladesh didn't exist but only India so this area was controlled by Tripura kings the Tripuri kings this area but however the Tripura uh, kingdoms was uh, like shrank to the present state so okay so this is the place where Chakma people live in Bangladesh Chari Hill tracks and again this is the Myanmar and Chakma people there are about uh, like 100,000 Chakma people population in, in 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 Myanmar so Chakma people live in this area it's called uh, uh, Mongdo and Budidong and also this area uh, especially this area where most of the Chakma people live so the this is not really developed uh, territory very underdeveloped uh, very undeveloped territories but however mm, however uh, this is uh, this place is belong to Rakhine state so this is the Rakhine state and Chakma people live in this area Budidong, Mongdo, most of people go back to India where do Chakma people live in India okay so in Mizoram Mizoram, the state of uh, Northeast India. Uh, okay, I will check. I got a comment from Tor in Changma. Can you see total Chakma demography all over the world? I think I have mentioned in the descriptions there is about uh, okay, in maybe in Chira Hill tracks might be over 400,000 Chakma people. Or maybe 500 uh, 500,000 Chakma people so 5 lakh in Bangladesh at present so 1 lakh or 100,000 in Myanmar and in Mizoram so there could be almost 100,000 uh, Chakma people so in Mizoram Chakma people live especially in this area uh, this like border area almost this border area uh, the border area this place so most of these territories like inhabited by Chagma people and there are some Lai, Mara, uh, the tribes there, the living there. So this area where the Chagma people live and Chagma CADC which is the only uh, administrative territory of Chagma people or Chagma Autonomous District Council we call that was that uh, that is mm, that is uh, uh located here so you can see there are a buddhist temple wherever chakma people live uh, you can see there are of course some buddhist uh, monasteries not only in in india but also you can see those uh buddhist symbol that uh dharma wheel symbol in in india in bangladesh too uh you can see but I think most of Buddhist temples are not uh, reported in Google Map. I think those who are aware of uh, Google Map, they should actually report or like record the Buddhist monastery. Here is Raj Bana Vihar, and here, is, uh, here are some other Raj Bana Vihar, and also some other places, Raj Vihara so also Khazaria temple so there are like Buddhist monasteries all over these places because uh, these places are inhabited by Buddhist people and Chakma people so anyway let's go back to India so here Chakma people live in this place uh, is Marpara Nunsuri Lungle and there are some other places uh, Chongte or sometimes it's called Kamala Nagar by Chagma people and upper part yeah this is the upper part uh, 
good morning from yeah okay so upper part of the Myanmar this is the upper part anyway I'm just trying to show uh, the the, uh, the geographical location of Chagma people so here this part in in, in Myanmar Chagma people live over maybe 100,000 Chagma people in Myanmar and the history say that Chagma people like you know they have uh, migrated from this Himalayan area maybe in early time and then they went this they took this itinerary ended up in this place a uh, very early place and then from here after being invaded by powerful kings they were like chased away or driven away to this place and to this area and that's how Chakma people at presently like uh, uh, choose this these territories as they are native uh, places anyway this is the Chakma uh, uh, Museum uh, this area is known as North East India very different than the main part of India uh, North East India there are eight states which are Tripura, Mizoram, Manipur, Nagaland, Assam, Meghalaya, Arunachal Pradesh and Sikkim which we call eight sisters because there are eight states so we call it eight sister anyway let me go back to Mizoram so these are the Mizoram and this is Tripura and Chama people live in this area this is the capital of Tripura and this area most of this area are inhabited by Chakma people you can see when you zoom in you can see there are mm, uh, Buddhist monasteries Buddhist uh, Buddhist temple here you can see Pancharatan Janakalyan Buddha Vihar and also two Chakma Maitri Bana Vihar and there are some other here Thabidapara Buddha Vihar so you can see uh, and there are churches also mm. so these are Dumbu Lake this is Dumbu Lake oh most of my childhood memories are actually embedded in this area in this Dumbur Lake anyway so here uh, this 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 is in India in Bangladesh this is in Bangladesh but still Chakma people uh, chose these territories uh, when there were no borders no countries Chakma people live here and Agatala and now in SM in SM uh, this Mizoram this is Chupura in SM Chakma people are living here where uh, let me see mm. this is Manipur oh this is Nagaland here Chakma people live here in this area where is Dipo okay this area in a Sam Chakma people are living in this area so uh, so so this is a Karbi Anglong, Lamding, so this is the area and uh, the Bodhicharya, Bodhicharya English schools is located in this area. Let me turn on the satellites. Uh, okay, here. I have actually noted these places. This is the, uh, this is the locations of uh, Bodhicharya English school. Bodhicharya English School here. Uh, this should be actually Bodhi Pragya, but there is some mistake, spelling mistake. Anyway, I tried to fix this spelling, but I think uh, Google is still reviewing my edit, uh, my now my edits. So these are the places, these are the villages. So uh, village children uh, come to this temple, to this school to get education and this, uh, this is the only route to be connected with other major cities and these are the main cities actually and yeah so Chuck my people live here in Assam and also of course they live in Guwahati too Guwahati is here uh, Dimapur and Guwahati is here Guwahati is here so Guwahati is known as the gateway of Northeast India because wherever you go if you want to visit to Nagaland, Manipur, Tripura or Arunachal Pradesh, uh, first you should come here 
or otherwise if you choose flight you can fly from uh, Kolkata to uh, directly to Aizol there are some flights so Assam and Chakma people in Arunachal Pradesh so in Arunachal Pradesh Chakma people live here Mm, Tinsukia and uh, Pasigat. Okay, here, this is the main uh, main area where Chakma people live. The Dayun, Bordumsa, Namsai, and when you zoom in Dayun area, you can see there are some Buddhist temples. Of course, Buddhist temples. Uh, yeah, most of the time you can see uh, like churches too because. Uh, uh, Arunachal Pradesh and Nagaland and Manipur, most of the uh, tribe, they follow Christianity. They con were converted to Christian Christianity. So, this is the place where uh, Chakma people live in Arunachal, uh, in Arunachal Pradesh. Mm. Wait, Teju, uh, Namsai, Changlang, Empen, Miao. These are the places, these are the territories where Chakma people live. So, uh, someone asked um, to show like the other places where, where Chakma people live. So, there are some small uh, diasporas in Japan. So, there are some group families of Chakma people, they, uh, they are in, in, uh, in Japan. So there is a city called Tochigi where I have been. So yeah, this this is the area where maybe there are like 100 Chakmas or 200 Chakma people like living in Japan, Tochigi, Tochigi city and maybe one or few members are living in Yokohama too. Maybe 100 200 Chakma uh, Chakma individual in Japan, mostly in, in Tochigi. And if you talk about Korea, so uh, Chakma, there are some P Chakma diasporas in Gimpo city, which is not very far from uh, the main uh, capital Seoul, Gimpo. Okay, here. So this is the area where Chakma people live. So in 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 South Korea. Uh, this is the Seoul and this is the Gimpo city. So yeah, there are maybe one two hundred Maybe more than two hundred. I mean 10 20 or 20 families of Chakma people in South Korea And also there are small diaspora in France uh, France where is let me see the France here so not many people actually there the Chakmas in France they live in Lyon city here Lyon and some of them are maybe in like uh, in different places they are not in a single place so most some Chakmas are living in Lyon cities some are nearby the Paris so in Chakma people maybe how many individual could be 500 individual And if you talk about U.S., where do we, where the Chakma people live in U.S. here? Uh, well, most of the Chakma people there, about 40 to 50 Chakma families are living in California, and almost 90, 80 to 90 uh, persons of Chakma people living in this area, where is San Bernardino? County San Bernardino here so this is the area where Chakma people live so San Bernardino County uh, this is the California state and this is Los Angeles and Chakma people living in this area mm. uh, let me see Helen Morono Valley Riverside, Jurupa Valley, uh, Highland, Loma Linda. Okay, here. So, most of 
American Chakmak people living in this area, Loma Linda, Redland, Highland, and these are the places actually, Highland, Loma Linda, Redland, and Colton, these are the uh, locations where Chakmak people live. I'm not aware about the Australia, there are, also, there are some like small diaspora, Chakma diasporas in Australia, but I'm not sure where they live. Most of Chakma people, I think they live in uh, Adelaide, where is, uh, where is Adelaide? Mm. Adelaide. So here, Adelaide. So I'm, I don't know whether I'm like, uh, pr uh, pronouncing this word correctly or not, but this is the area, this is the place where Chakma people live, and also there are some other live in Melbourne city too, but I think uh, some Chakmas, most of Chakmas I know, they live here, and also in Melbourne city, so, uh, so this is the main geographical location for Chakma people, this state, this little state you can see, uh, Chiragong Hill Tracks here, not not Chiragong or Chotogram, but this area, especially this area, Chiragong Hill Tracks, Mizrams, Rakhine State, uh, Mundo, Budidong, this area, Tripura, Tripura mainly in this Gandachara, Ambasa, Mono, Kumargat, Dharmanagar or like uh, Cholengta mm. so these are the areas where Chakma people live in Tripura and in Assam they live in Dipu, Karbi Anglong, Lamding and there are some other Chakmas living in Dibrugar and in Orange for this they live here uh, Dayun city so maybe very small towns so Dayan city Chokam Chokam and Latao the there are some other Buddhist people too in in Arunachal Pradesh mostly like uh, Kamti Simpo those are the Theravada Buddhist people and if we talk about the Tibetan Buddhist people the Monpa Monpa uh, Monpa follow Tibetan traditions and Tawang monastery in Arunachal Pradesh is the most famous mm, foremost monastery in India so this is very huge huge monastery and it said that fifth Dalai Lama was born here uh, in this area Chinese China border is actually uh, here this is the China the Chinese border and Tawang monastery is here and Monpa people live here, Tibetan, uh, Tibetan tradition, they follow Tibetan Buddhist, Buddhism. And if somebody wishes to visit this area, one, one can start from actually Guwahati. So you arrive here, maybe spend one day or two days and then go to Tezpur, Jorha, Dibuga, you can cover this area. Uh, maybe it depends on how many days you want to spend in the uh, on your I mean how many days you can you include in your itinerary so Assam mm, I think especially if some people who only visit Bihar or Bodh Gaya they should also visit this area to explore more diverse culture diverse people languages you know the India has nearly 800 languages so in this area, even though uh, this in Tripura, if you move from one village to another village, so they speak they speak different language, they have different culture, but of course uh, Bengali, Hindi, English, Bengali, Tripura, Bengali is more is the most dominant language in Mizoram, English or Mizo language in Manipur, um, Manipuri. And in Meghalaya, uh, English or Kasi or Hindi, all, all the languages are used. In Assamese, Assamese is kind of lingua franca in 
this northeast India so if you understand Bengali and SMEs uh, it's very intelligible uh, very uh, you can communicate with uh, with other tribes uh, if you take talk about Arunachal Pradesh they are actually over hundreds tribes they have different languages different culture so uh, the lang there's no language barrier but yeah if you go deep inside those remote villages you, maybe some uh, older elder generation they don't speak Hindi or English maybe they speak only their native language but it's but of course young people or like those who uh, who are studying outside of their state they speak Hindi they speak English but in Assam of course you can use Hindi or you can use Assamese in Nagaland mostly they speak Nagamese even though it's very much same to Assamese so Chakma language is very uh, Chakma people they are very multilingual they speak Hindi they speak English they speak Assamese uh, no matter wherever you are if Chakma, uh, Chakma live in Mizoram, he will still understand and communicate in SMS language. So, uh, if you speak SMS language, you can communicate with any other, uh, any other like tribes. In Arunachal Pradesh, mostly they speak Hindi, so that's how they communicate with other different tribes uh, here. So, I guess some people who are. Mm, watching this video they have a basic understanding about demographical uh, locations of Chakma people so Chakma live in this area Mizoram, Tipura, Chiron Hill Tracks, Rakhine State, Assam and Arunachal Pradesh so that's why if uh, maybe there are some others uh, you c if you meet some some Chakmas they will tell you they are from India they will tell you from uh, from maybe Bangladesh or even from Myanmar but Chakmas in Myanmar they are they are like uh, using uh, maybe Rakhine names because you know they have been uh, secluded for a long time but now Chakmas from India and Chiron Hill Tracks visit them and then they are now trying to revive their lost language lost Chakma language lost Chakma culture so here anyway uh let me see what people are commenting mm. oh anyway so if you talk about the populations so here before i said around 400 to 500 chakma population in children health tracks 100 thousands chakmas in mizoram 100 000 in myanmar and same amount 100 uh, 60 to 70 thousands Chakmas live in Tripura and 30 to 40 thousand Chakmas live in Arunach uh, in Assam and in Arunachal Pradesh might be 60 to 70 thousand Chakmas live in Arunachal Pradesh and the difference between Chakmas in Arunachal Pradesh and other states is Chakmas are still like fighting to claim their basic rights like they don't get uh, even though they were settled in 64 but it's still they're struggling to get their um, basic uh, document to write like uh, birth certificates resident cards voter cards uh, permanent residents because if you live in India these these document these basic documents are the most important documents to get a job to get a higher education to get any to get admission to any other like good college and schools you have to show your birth certificate you have to show your voter card uh, maybe a resident card maybe PR permanent resident or a scheduled tribe a school or tribal certificate otherwise you won't be uh, you won't get any like uh, permission to take any admission to a good college and that's why uh, Chakma people in Arunachal Pradesh they are struggling uh, for their uh, rights of birth certificate or scheduled tribal certificates uh, on that case Chakmas in, in living in Tripura Mizoram they have their like certificates 
birth certificate, scheduled tri tribal certificate, permanent residence certificate, person card and voter cards. They are fine, but still they face racial discrimination in Mizoram from Mizo people. Tripura, comparing to Mizoram, Arunachal Police and Chiron Hill Tracks, Tripura is still okay for Chakmai people. They don't face uh, such racial discrimination. So I hope people who watch this video or who will watch this video, they will have uh, a basic understanding about Chakma people uh, and their location and their demographical locations. And if you have a friend who is curious about Chakmas, who is curious about where the Chakma people live, you can show this video and then they will have maybe basic understanding. So thank you again. I will uh maybe reply or answer some people's questions later so let me just repeat chakmas live in this place here and then in 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 japan where is japan in japan in this area tochigi area in seoul is gimpo area in France, very small diaspora, not very uh, big numbers, big populations. And in France, it's uh, is lion. Here is lion, lion, and nearby the Paris. And in in United States, in California, and of course some are in uh, New York too. Uh, in New York City here so some are living in this uh, New York City some are in Massachusetts too in Boston in New York City and in Australia it's uh, where is Adelaide 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 oh and some in in this area actually Adelaide and then also maybe uh, some other like uh, Melbourne city too okay thank you so much for watching I will come back and answer your questions if you have any on comments